implicit differentiation involving logarithmic functions. So when do you do implicit? You do implicit differentiation when you are unable to isolate y on one side. So let's take a look at the second function. So this one we have a x times y, we have a y to the 10 that is equals to y. It is hard to have y on one side and then a bunch of x on the other side, right? So the second equation is clearly implicit. How about the first one? The first one you might say, uh, well, you can put the minus x to the fifth to the right hand side and then you can take e raised to the entire right hand side equals to y. Yes, that will work. But this problem in this problem, I would like to focus on implicit differentiation. So on the test, either written or online, I will just be very clear that in this problem, I would like you to perform implicit differentiation. Okay, just be very clear on the test. I want to see implicit differentiation. So you should show your work using implicit differentiation. Okay, let's get started. So the first problem, uh, what, what do we do? We have to differentiate both sides. So what do I mean by that? So we have to do d dx, the left hand side, and then d dx, the right hand side. That means take the derivative on both sides with respect to x. So we have ln y minus x to the fifth and then times ln x and then this side is ln of 10. So ln of 10 is equals to zero. And then what is the derivative of ln y with respect to x? So remember that back to our introduction to implicit differentiation, I said that treat y as an x. So imagine you are doing the derivative of ln x, so that it will be 1 divided by x, right? So this time you are writing 1 divided by y, but since this is with respect to x, you have a y, then you have a mark this by saying dy dx. That is how you do implicit differentiation. And then the second piece, uh, the, uh, the product rule. So the product rule is fg prime plus gf prime. So this is x to the fifth and then one over x plus g is ln x. The derivative of x to the fifth is phi x to the fourth. Finish that and then that is equals to zero. Uh, in case you are wondering why do we have to mark a dy dx, so let me uh, just put a note right, right, right over here. So let's say you are doing um, you are doing d dx, right, and then y to the fifth. So using implicit differentiation. So here is the process, the implicit behind the scene. So you have a d right here and then y to the fifth, and then you break down the dx over here. And then what is left? The leftover I will force to a piece in, in here. But just say by saying dy and dy. So do we agree that the dy can be cancelled? I add an extra piece to the process by saying two dy's. And then the d the dy with the derivative with respect to y, y to the fifth, so that is four, five phi y to the fourth right and then you have this piece dy dx so that's how that's how you do the implicit and then regarding the ln y so you have d dx ln y so that is equals to you have a d and then you have a ln y and then the dx over here so this is what we started with and then you have to add a piece to it but it's just saying dy and dy so the derivative of ln y is one over y and then the dy dx goes right over here. So that's why you have a 1 over y dy dx. So this is implicit differentiation and I clearly introduced that in my implicit differentiation video. You can go back to the, to, to the playlist. There are a couple videos explaining implicit differentiation and I have tons examples. All right, so back to our business. Okay, so uh, the right hand side is zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the entire piece, bring this entire piece to the right hand side. So on the left, I have one over y dy dx. So for the dy dx, some textbook, they prefer to call this a y prime, but I prefer to use dy dx equals to uh, this is a x to the fourth plus ln x. Oh, actually, I'm going to do this. 5x to the fourth and then times ln x and then in case you're wondering hey that should be the minuses right no okay you bring the entire piece to the other side right the entire piece so the plus, the minus becomes a plus so that's why there are no minuses on the right and then 
all you have to do is multiply both sides by y, so you have a dy dx equals to y times everything on the right hand side, x to the fourth plus 5x to the fourth times ln x, and then in implicit, we do not distribute the y, so we leave it as it is. So this is your final answer. And again, some textbook call this a y prime instead of dy dx. I pers in, in my perspective, I prefer to use dy dx. Okay, moving on to the next one. So the next one first, I would like to recall this. You, you might see that, okay, x times y, so that will be a product rule, right? Yes, you can use product rule, but let's simplify that for you. So let's recall that ln, remember this, a times b, equals to ln a plus ln b. So that means I can rewrite the function as, rewrite the ln as ln x plus ln y and then minus y to the 10 equals to y. So now I use implicit and then I just ddx both sides, right? So take the derivative on both sides with, with respect to x. So this is a y, this is a ln x plus ln y minus y to the 10, right? The derivative of ln x simple, that is one over x, and then the derivative of ln y, just like what I explained right over here. So first you have one over y, so since this is a with respect to x, then you have to add a dy dx to it. Same thing for the next term, so that is a 10y to the 9 power rule, and then you immediately add the dy dx to it. And then same thing for the right hand side, the derivative of y is equals to 1, and then dy dx. That's why I give you so many y's in here. Okay, uh, what's the next step? The next step is I would like to keep all the dy dx on one side, I prefer the left hand side, and then all the x on the other side. So I have 1 over y, dy dx, minus 10y to the ninth dy dx and then minus dy dx equals to negative 1 over x. Okay, and then you factor out the dy dx, so factor out a dy dx that is equals to 1 over y minus 10y to the ninth minus 1 equals to negative 1 over x. And then uh, the very last step, so you have uh, 1 over x divided by the whole thing, right? So you have a dy dx equals to negative 1, 1 over x, yep, negative 1 over x divided by the whole thing. So this you have, um, you have a 1 over y minus 10 y to the 9 minus 1. And then this, I will just call this as my final answer. Uh, there is another way to get rid of the complex fraction. So first you can do this, you can do a dy dx. First of all, I, I'm good with this, okay? So I will just bring the negative one over x out, and then this is a one over, right? One over y minus 10 y to the nine minus one. And then in some cases, people are not happy with having a y in the denominator. So if you want to get rid of the y, so all you have to do is, you multiply top and bottom by y. So after the distribution, the y will be gone. And then the x, uh, you can just leave the x outside. But to me, this step is really not necessary. I will just take this as the final answer because this is implicit differentiation, right? This is not about how to take care of complex fraction. So as long as your implicit differentiation is fine, I will just give you full credits. But in real life, when you are doing exams or homeworks online, they would like you to go all the way to the end, then this is what you have to do, okay? So that is the end of the video. Do you like it? Is this helpful? If so, give me a like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye.